Welcome to Historophiles, and today we're talking about the Romans. The Romans were masters of innovation, especially when it came to their military, and their military was the most advanced of the age. They had the weapons, tactics and technology needed to expand and maintain a huge empire with such a thinly stretched army. One such innovation was needed to answer the question of how to prevent the enemy from surprising you at night or while you were resting, which could be devastating. The answer? A fortified marching camp. These fortified camps were built by the soldiers each and every day after completing the day's marching and were an incredible feat of engineering, typical of the Romans. They first began to use these marching camps after suffering defeat against King Ferus of Epirus, who beat them with a phalanx-style army at the battles of Heraclea and Asculum in 280 and 279 BC. After both of these defeats, the Roman forces were chased and harried by enemy cavalry, making it difficult to regroup and prepare to fight again. This gave them the idea to build a safe, fortified position where they could reorganise should an action go against them. Over time, the marching camp would evolve to become a very typically Roman invention. It could be constructed quickly and efficiently, even after a long day of hard marching. A remarkable piece of engineering which showed once again the intelligence with which the Romans did everything. The fort was first marked out by four surveyors. After the gates had been marked, the entire area would be cleared and levelled, ready for building. Ten men from each century, known as the Colour Party, would then use coloured flags to identify the various areas of the camp. The army would then march in and dump their gear in the location marked for them before getting stuck into the construction work. The soldiers would first dig the outer ditch, using the ground they dug up to build the foundations of the defensive wall. Each and every camp had the same layout. No matter how big, the design was such that it would always be the same no matter what. This was not just because the Romans were obsessed with order, but for very practical reasons. If a messenger arrived at the camp, he would be able to find the camp leaders quickly and easily. Additionally, it made it easier for soldiers to find their quarters when moving into a new fort. This is what a Roman marching camp would look like. First, you have the ditch and palisade. Then, the four gates. The Porta Pretoria, the Porta Decumana, the Porta Principalis Sinastra, and the Porta Principalis Dextra. In the middle would be the Praetorium, which would be the commander's tent. This would be flanked by command staff tents and cavalry. Behind this would be the Questorium, which would house the quartermaster and the commissary. Around the rest of the camp, in four blocks, would be the soldiers' tents. The main road through the camp from the Porta Pretoria up to the commander's tent would be known as the Via Pretoria, while the main crosswise road was called the Via Quintana. The road around the camp between the tents and the palisade was called the Via Sagularis. The next day, before continuing to march, the legionaries would demolish the fort they worked so hard to build the previous night. This was in order to deprive their enemy of any useful fortifications. So that's the end of this Historophiles Mini, and as always, the references are in the description box below. If you liked the video, and I hope you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, or maybe even share, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!